the babies are lifting their hands. Even the children are lifting their hands in this moment. Rianda so kia. Shande yo so. in the 
worship. When the Holy Spirit comes, we can't move. Our agenda goes out the door. We had some songs planned, but the Spirit of the Lord is here. He came to touch our hearts today. He came to transform our minds today. The Spirit of refreshing is in this house. Oh, Jesus.
morning in my um in my time of worship and preparation was way maker miracle worker light in the darkness that was my song this morning and I woke up with it ringing in my ears so of course I had to go here and I had to play it but he is a way maker a miracle worker light in the darkness that's who he is and God was kind of just talking to me about miracles he said you got to be in a miracle posture for God to release a miracle in your life you got to be in a miracle situation for God to release miracle in your life and I am just so grateful that my posture is upright that I'm keeping my heart and my mind stayed on him because the things that he has already done. See, I get excited when God do miracles in other people's life. Cause that lets me know that my God is alive and my God is real. Ooh, if you ever doubted him, my God, just call somebody up on the phone. Just go through Facebook and, and just read testimonies. Hallelujah, our God is a good God. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Your ministering angels that are encamped about us, for this is the day that the Lord hath made. And I'm making a conscious decision to rejoice and be glad in it. So I don't care what's going on, our God is a good God. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. You don't know the reason why people stand to their feet and give God some praise. Glory to God, hallelujah. So we're just excited about his goodness and his mercy that I was able to get up this morning and walk through the doors cold in my right mind. See, we take things like that for granted, but I'm living in a time that I don't take those things for granted because somebody didn't wake up this morning. But God saw fit to clothe me in my mind, right mind, that I got a heart to worship him. That I got a mind, I want to lift my hands. Even when things don't look too good, I still know that God is good in the midst of it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, this pandemic calls those that truly love God to completely depend on God. 
all the crutches that we had, the job security, the, the, the friends, the family, all those things were gone. But I woke up and I said, God, I'm keeping my soul dependence on you. And I asked God to forgive me that at every t any time I put anything or anybody in front of you, God, I repent. But this morning we're standing in the presence of people, hopefully online, people are tuning in. Glory to God, let them know that new birth is on live and we are alive, we are awake. And we're here to serve God and give God some praise and some glory. Come on, put your hands together and exalt the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. worthy to be praised. He is still worthy, 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 worthy. Come on, somebody worthy, that worthy as a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Come on and give him some praise, give him some praise, give him some praise. Bless the name, bless the name, bless the name, bless the name, bless the name that's above every name. And at that name, every knee shall bow and every, every tongue must confess. That Jesus is Lord. Come on, bless the name, bless the name, bless the name, bless the name, bless the name. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Blessed name of Jesus. It is indeed a, an honor and a privilege to be before you once again. This is my first time in the in the in, the, in my pulpit for the last two weeks. Mother's Day was a very powerful word from my wife the message from the Lord and uh, and, and I want to say to all of you mothers that were, were not here uh, happy Mother's Day Mother Simmons happy Mother's Day it's, it's belated but still happy Mother's Day we love you and to all of you uh, minister happy Mother's Day and we love y'all we bless y'all I hope you guys I hope you guys are ready um, for me on on this morning I don't have very long but uh, there's some things I want to share with you that's going to uh, change the trajectory of your life and I think for some of us the reason why we haven't hit the mark is because we're aiming we're aiming too low and, uh, and our expectations are low but as my wife has already stated in order for you to receive a miracle, you have to be in a situation that you need a miracle. And I don't know about you, but I need God to do something. On this morning, I need God to move up and down the corridors of my heart. I need God to move over my family, over my finances over my future I, I just need God to wave over it come on somebody I just need God to wave over it I need God to wave over it I need God to move and just wave over it speak a word Lord and my son will be healed speak a word God and my daughter will be delivered speak a word Lord So on 
this morning, it, 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 it really depends on, and I'm going to talk about this, but it really depends on your expectations. And oftentimes, the, the reason why a lot of us doubt God is because we limit his ability to move in our direction. And I don't know about you, but I believe that God is, is moving in our direction. I, I don't know what your address is. I don't know what your email is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not in your inbox, but God knows all of that. And he's able to move into your direction. Even on your job, he's able to move on your job. Come on, crazy children, he's able to move. So on, on this morning, on this morning, I have a word from the Lord. And, 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 and the word in which God has given me on this morning, I want to say this. Uh, I heard this word that I'm about to teach on this morning. I heard this word last Sunday when I stepped out of the pulpit from celebrating my mother and my wife and all the, the mothers for Mother's Day. I heard this word and I've been, been kind of uh, rehearsing this word in my spirit all week long. There's a scripture that God gave me and I've been rehearsing it in my spirit all week long. All week long. And and, and I promise you, I, I'm not trying to belabor the time, but I believe that all of you need to understand, like the sons of Issachar, we need, we need to learn how to be discerning of the times. And, 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 and come on, somebody, you need to learn how to be discerning of the time in which we're in. And so, and so very quickly, the Bible says in Luke, the sixth chapter, uh, the 38th verse, it's a familiar verse, but the Bible says, give and it shall be given to you good measures pressed down shaken together and running over uh, and running over will be put into your bosom for with the measure the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you you need to read it one more time Luke 6 and 38 says given it shall be given unto you good measures pressed down shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you now before I give you the thought uh, I just want to take the very portion of this verse and the very portion of this verse the a portion says give and it shall be given uh, unto you uh, this morning I want to teach from the subject it's my time and it's my season come on somebody I just want to I just want to I just want to encourage you I just want to encourage you, that's all. I'm not here to beat you, I just want to elevate you. I want to encourage you. That it's my time. And it's my season. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful and so thankful that you've given us this moment to come before you. Once again, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will anoint my lips Lord God and even as I speak forth the oracles of God I pray right now Lord God that you won't leave any stone unturned God give us eyes to see ears to hear and a receptive heart even as the word of the Lord is going forth on this morning I pray right now Lord God that you would do what needs to be done say what needs to be said God continue to demonstrate yourself in the midst of us God the praise and worship has already set an atmosphere and so God I believe that it's not going to be arduous for me to preach the gospel on this morning it's not going to be difficult it's not going to be hard for me to just slip right on into this anointing thank you father thank you father thank you father for having sensitive people discerning people around me Lord God that understands the atmosphere in which we are standing in. God, you told Moses to take your shoes off because the ground in which you're standing on is holy ground. Uh, God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father God, for doing what needs to be done in our lives. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. And let everybody say amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, put your hands together and give him some praise right there. Give him some praise. Come on. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Given it shall be given unto you. Let me, let me say this because the reason why I believe that God spoke this to me is because 
every true giver, every true giver is not really a good receiver. Let me move on this side because some of y'all getting every true giver, every person that has a giving heart, giving spirit. They're not really a good receiver. There were certain times that I would give so much and my wife would literally have to make me receive. Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries. My wife would really literally say, listen, I, what I need you to do, I, I don't need you to think about me. I don't, I don't need you to think about the children, but I need you to think about yourself because you are a giver. And sometimes it is hard for you to receive. And so when you become a true giver, it's, it's hard for true givers to receive. So watch this because God, God spoke to me uh, on the other day and I need to give you something that's going to change your life. Every, everything in life starts with a seed. According to Genesis 1, 11 and 12, I'm not going to read it. There is life in the seed. I've been telling you years, I've been telling you for years that when a seed goes into the ground, now watch this. Because the seed has life within itself, the ground becomes pregnant with the seed. And because the ground becomes pregnant with the seed, now watch this, the ground has to eventually give birth to an harvest. Oh, y'all getting quiet. I'm going to say it again, just as, as a, a man, a man, if everything is well, when, when a man goes into a woman, praise God, he releases a seed, and that seed overlays lays her egg, and that woman has to give birth. Well, likewise, likewise, when you sow that seed into good ground, what God began to speak to me, Monique, was this. God began to told, tell me that when we sow that seed in the right ground, the soil is working for us. Yeah. Y'all got to get that. The soil, the soil is working. It's not working against us, but the soil is working for us. He even told me that the wind and the rain and the lightning and the storm and the sun is working for us. So oftentimes when we experience a storm, even after we have sown a seed, you need to remember that that storm is working for you. Because I found out that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and for them that are called according to his purpose. And you may not be able to see what is working, praise God, but God told me to tell somebody, it's working, baby. It's working, baby. It's working, baby. And so when I sow my seed into the ground, the, the, the ground becomes pregnant with my seed because there's life within the seed itself. And because there's life within the seed, the ground has to become pregnant with my seed. Now watch this. And has to give birth to my harvest. I know this is a little deep for some of y'all, praise God. Y'all never heard that before. But you've got to remember because God taught me very, uh, very many, many years ago. He taught me about the farmer's mentality. What he taught me was this. He said, when the farmer sows the seed, you've got to remember that the farmer just don't sow the seed on dry ground. The so oh, y'all getting quiet. He, he makes sure that before he sowed his seed, he's already tilled the ground. I, I, he's already pulled the weeds come on somebody he's already got rid of crazy people out of his life and and some of y'all the reason why certain things can't grow in y'all life is because y'all still won't let go some people oh come on somebody because when a person don't support your vision sometimes it's time for you to leave and even if you leave just for a season it's time for you to walk away praise God get yourself together so that you can handle that relationship And so, and so God spoke to me and he said, your ground is pregnant with your harvest. And your ground has to give way. Come on, somebody. It has to give way to your harvest. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but, but some of us have been given for a long time. Some of us have been sacrificing a long time. Some of us have given away certain things for a long time. And now we're expecting something to happen on the other side of something that appears to be nothing. Can anybody shout glory? And so I believe that God has us. God has us right where he wants us. He has us right where we need to be and so instead of me complaining instead of me murmuring i need to understand that god has me right where he wants me to be now now watch this so watch this sit down sit down the ground would never return the seed in the manner in which it received the seed the ground will never return the seed in the manner in which it received the seed 
in other words, when I sow my seed, the ground is not just going to up chuck a seed. Okay, 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 let me see if I can say it this way. When, when, a, when a mother bird, when a mother bird goes out and a mother bird uh, starts getting food for, for the children, what the mother bird does, it swallows the food and its digestive system waters the food down. So, oh, y'all got to get that. So the babies or the baby birds can handle what she just ate. And so when I sow the seed into the ground, Mary, the seed, now watch this, the seed will not return to me in the manner in which I've sown it into the ground. Because the seed has life, but oh, because the seed has life within itself, the seed is for, forced to bring that life out of itself and bring me forth on the harvest. Come on, somebody, that I've been expecting some of us for years. We've been expecting a harvest for years and, and I don't know about you but I'm going to keep on tilling the ground. I'm going to keep on getting up in the morning praise God and looking for my harvest looking for not the seed in which I sown but I'm looking for the harvest that's going to come from the seed in which I sown. Can anybody shout glory? Now, 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 now watch this. Watch this. You, you, you got to get this. You got to get this. The reason why this is so important Latoya is because the seed grows in silence. Uh, I, I thought y'all, I thought y'all had that. I thought y'all. In other words, my seed is not making noise. My seed is not rumbling and, and tumbling and bumbling. Praise God, but my seed is growing in silence. That's why I can't talk about certain things I do because I don't want to curse the seed because I know the seed is growing in silence. So somebody yell, my seed is growing in silence. My seed is growing in silence. So the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 7, the Bible says, uh, 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 be not deceived. God is not mocked for what, whatsoever man sows. That shall he also reap. He said, whatever man sows, what he sows will come back to him. Now, now, I like it this way, that whatever I've sown will come back to me. Good measures. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Y'all got to get this. I'm, I'm looking for the things in which I've sown. Come on, somebody. To return back to me, good measures, pressed down, shaken together. Can anybody shout glory? The ninth verse in that said, in that said chapter says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So now watch this, watch this. If you are experiencing weariness, it don't come from God. Because God said don't get weary in well-doing. It is the devil's job to try to get us weary in doing good. Because he don't want you to reap and harvest. And so if you're getting weary in well-doing, that's not God. But that's the devil trying to get you weary because he don't want you to be exposed to something greater than your now. Somebody yell this, say, 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 God, I need you to expose me to something greater than my now. Oh, y'all got to get, I thought y'all was get that one. So what can hinder my seed from bringing me into my due season? I'm glad you asked. The first thing that can hinder me um, from, from, from going into my due season is complacency. Somebody else, complacency. Complacency is self-satisfied, smug, overly pleased with oneself. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, the Bible says, For I say through the grace given to me to every man who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each and every one of us a measure of faith. 
So we become so complacent. We become so overly confident. We become so, so smug. We become so satisfied with ourselves. And another thing that, that can stop me from going into my, my due season, I need you to get this, is a critical spirit. Mm. Uh, so some of you wondering why, wondering why stuff is, 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 is growing around you, but you can't touch it. It's because you might have a critical spirit. Uh, come on, somebody. One of our, one of our, our words, praise God, is, is peevish. Uh, you just can't satisfy certain people. They complain about everything. Come on, somebody. And no matter what you do, you can't satisfy. I don't care if, if come on, Mother Marshall. I don't care if the whole entire house is clean. You're going to find something to complain about. Y'all got to get that. Y'all got to get that. And so it's, oh, you got to get that. It's peevish. And so, and so a critical spirit can stop me from getting into my due season so so watch this they'll never please a critical spirit expects and finds its appointment wherever it looks a critical spirit arrogantly judges is easily provoked accounts for every wrong and never carries any hope of being pleased So some of you might be givers, but because you have a critical spirit. Oh, Pastor Monica, I thought, I thought somebody. You might be a giver, but you have a critical spirit. And it's hard for you, come on, it's hard for anybody to please you. Oh, you got to get that, you got to get that, you got to get that. No, no, matter, no matter if your food is just right, Tommy. You're going to find something. Oh, you got to get this. Uh, you got to find something wrong with the food. I, I, I'm saying this because on my birthday, we, we went out to eat and we was out the way. We was outside eating, praise God. And everybody was satisfied with their food. And, and somebody wasn't satisfied with, with, with her food. And because she wasn't satisfied with her food, we sent her food back to get her something that she would like. But we already had told her to get what we got, but she wanted to get something different. Oh, and so, and so we've got to be very careful because some of us are givers but but it's hard to satisfy us and we become critical oh come on somebody of everything and everybody and when you become critical of everything and everybody what you're doing is you're cursing the seed and now your ground can't get pregnant with what you sow and now you're wondering why you don't have a harvest I thought that was good right there. I thought that was real good. Some of y'all, some of y'all be talking about something. He be throwing shade. And even y'all out there, he, why he throwing shade? That's why you can't walk with me. Because if I can't train you, ain't no need you walking with me. If I can't teach you and talk about you, you can't walk with me. Ask my ministers, they'll tell you, if I can't talk about you and I can't teach you, you can't walk with me. Uh, and the last but not least, what can, what can stop me or hinder me from going in, into my due season is carnality. Living through our carnal nature instead of living by the spirit, according to Romans 8, 1 through 9. Living throughout our emotions. We become emotional and we can't handle certain things. Don't you know that, that you have to be able to handle the hard things in, in order for God to elevate you? In other words, you can't walk around with your, with your feelings on your sleeves, always looking to be offended. And then this is your testimony. See, I knew you was going to do that. The reason why you knew I was going to do that is because you were looking for it. But when a person is not looking to be offended, they're not walking around in their emotions. I'm not walking around in my emotions because I know that eventually offense will happen. Offense will come. People will offend you. People will make you mad, praise God. I told y'all on Facebook about the situation I had on last week. On Mother's Day. On Mother's Day, I was, I was 
my wife said I got on these heels and she said we don't need to part way out there because I, I got on these heels and so me being the man that I am, the husband that I am, and uh, the, the lover of my wife that I am, I tried my best to get us as close as we can possibly get. And then I saw a man come into his heart car, praise God, and, and, and he was in the very front, a very front, uh, I mean, it's a very front, very front. And so what I did, I waited, and, and, and as I waited, it looked like he was taking his time, Nikki. I wasn't complaining about him taking his time. I was still going to wait. I was waiting patiently on the Lord. Y'all got to get that. I was waiting on God to move so I can, you, you got to get that. I was waiting on God to move so I can pull in. And so I was waiting patiently on the man to move. And then so he took his precious time putting his grocery in. He saw me, but that's all right. I wasn't upset. My wife and I, we were just waiting there patiently, just waiting for him to move. And, and so he put all his grocery in into his car. And when he pulled all of his, all of his grocery, in his car he, he looked around to see where he can push the buggy and so he walked all the way down the aisles and and pushed the bucket bucket where, where it belongs praise God and came back and looked around again I said okay we got we got this I got that I was patient didn't complain whatsoever then all of a sudden when he pulled out Karen pulled in yo yeah yo yeah yo 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 When he pulled out, now I was waiting patiently on the Lord. When he, when he pulled out, Karen pulled in. And when Karen pulled in, I laid on the horn. Oh, y'all getting quiet. I laid on the horn trying to get into my parking spot. But Karen kept on going and Karen pulled in. So I rolled my window down and I was just going to t ask Karen, didn't you see me waiting on the parking spot? And Karen didn't even get out of her car. So, so now watch this, watch this. I could have got it all in my emotions. I could have got all in my flesh. I could have banged on the window and... You see, y'all getting, getting quiet. Y'all getting quiet. I could have banged on the one. I could have saw her in Walmart and, uh, and tripped her. I could have ran into her with my buggy, y'all. Oh, oh, that was you. I apologize. I, I ain't even know. I ain't see you. See, 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 Deacon Simmons, y'all, Deacon Simmons, y'all, y'all, y'all holy. Y'all don't think like this, praise God. But I, I could have saw Karen at Walmart and I could have ran into her with my buggy. I could have tripped. I could have just, oh, I'm sorry, and just stripped Karen. But, uh, so while we were waiting, there was a young lady that was sitting in a car and she saw us the entire time. And so when we laid on the horn, she got out of a car and she looked at Karen and looked at us and she said, and pointed at Karen. In other words, she couldn't believe that this happened to us. That why would this lady be so rude after you were sitting there for minutes upon minutes waiting on a parking spot? And so when, when you sow your seed, all of us, Mary, will be tempted to get into our emotions. We will be tempted to become carnal and not spiritual. Come on, we'll feel justified in cussing or cursing. Come on, somebody. Somebody out. Because, because I was sitting there for 10 minutes, and, and Pastor, I understand what they said, and I understand they text you and told you I was showing out at Walmart, but, but, but I was sitting there for, for 10 minutes, and I felt justified with telling her a piece of my mind because she saw me sitting there. And so what we do is we, we eat up our seed because of carnality. We walk in the flesh and not the spirit. And when I walk in the flesh and not the spirit, I eat up my seed. My seed cannot germinate. My seed falls into dry, stony, rocky ground. It's all for y'all to say amen. So to make a long story short, I, we walked in the, in the Walmart, 
got everything we needed. But I told God, I said, God, please let me run into the lady that saw me lay on the horn. So I forgot something, and I had to go back in. And God let me vomit to the lady, and I said, listen, I apologize for, for the way you saw me laying on that horn. This is not who I am. And I didn't have to tell her I was a pastor. I just said, this is not who I am. I don't let anything get to me. If anybody walk with me, you know I don't let stuff get to me. I just, I'm just, I'm just whatever. Talk about me, whatever. Say what you want. I'm just what trials and tribulation. I'm just a whatever kind of guy. And so I was apologizing to her in Walmart, Walmart and, and she said, she said, no, you had every right to do that. I said, no, but I, but I, but I didn't. I, I'm not trying to justify what I did. She said, but I sat there and I, I saw you and your wife and I saw y'all waiting on the park line. I saw that lady pull in and didn't even look your way. I said, but no, I want to apologize to you because you saw you saw me display something out of character. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We get out of character and we don't go and apologize to the people that saw us get out of character. I, I, I got too much seed in the ground. Uh, come on, somebody, to, to not apologize now. To be so full of pride that I can't say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. My bad. Whatever, however you want to do it. My bad. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me? Y'all gonna let me y'all gonna let me finish this? So when we are sowing good seeds, you should expect an enemy to try and overthrow the plan God has for your life through complacency, through a critical spirit, and through carnality. The enemy who comes but to steal, kill, and destroy the fer fertility from the Lord's field. He, he's trying to destroy the fertility from the Lord's field. So when I sow the seed, my seed cannot bring, up, bring, bring a harvest because the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy the fertility of the Lord's field. Oh, you got to get this. Let me finish this up. Watch this. Watch this. I believe, I believe three things need to change in order for you to prosper and have economic empowerment. Now, now watch this. The first thing that need to change is perception. The first thing need to change is your mind. Now, told me I'm gonna get in trouble. What, what I'm about to say. The reason why our minds need to change is because we are being influenced by, by, by our own peers. The African-American is, is being influenced by the African-American community. And, and, and poor people are being influenced by poor people. I, I told you I'm going to get in trouble with this, but I, I would just want to share something with you, praise God. Now, now, some of you are wondering, why did I make the decision? I'm not telling you to make the decision. Some of you are wondering, why did I make, this, make the decision to get, to get vaccinated? Okay, of course, my, I, I made the decision based upon what my bishop said, which was, a, which was powerful. I'm not going to go into that, but I, I made it based upon that. But one of the things I look at, Mother Simmons, you got to get this. I'm a little different than y'all. I don't look at, at, at our community. But, I, but I, looked, I looked at Governor Santos when he brought, when he brought the, the, the vaccinations into the community, he took it to the, the, the rich people first. Oh, you, you, you got to get that. You, you, see, see, see. You got to get this. See, your mind. You, you got your mind, your mind. He took it to the rich people first. So, so instead of me looking at y'all in, in, in a poor community, I'm going to look at what, what's happening in, in the rich community. In other words, it, the, 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 the virus was so, so detrimental. It was so dangerous that, that when he brought it into Florida, he brought it into the rich community first. Now, we're not concerned about the poor community. Let's take it to the rich community first. Because it is the rich community that will furnish my campaign. Y'all got to get that. And so we so busy, we so busy listening to each other. We ain't got no depth whatsoever. We keep listening to each other. I heard about this and I heard about that and folks start walking backwards and, and, and yeah, 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 keep it up. 600,000 people 
done lost their lives. And, and I want to say this. Even though I love the Lord, it could have been me. Oh, come on, somebody. It could have been you, but God made death behave itself. And so come on, color folks. We need to change our mind. When you have a future and a hope, you're going to do whatever it takes to stay here to see that future and that hope becomes fulfilled. So when I was making my decision, when I was making my decision, my decision. I consulted with my personal physician, not Missy, but my personal physician, which is a woman of color. And she said, I suggest, y'all got to get, y'all getting quiet. And she said, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, uh, but I suggest uh, you take the vaccination. Y'all got to get that, y'all got to get that. So the Bible says, out of the mouth of two to three witnesses, let every word be established. And some of us are so spiritual that we got to hear from God himself. I had already heard from, from my bishop. I had already heard from what Governor Santos did. And I heard from my doctor. And I took the vaccination. Why? Because I want to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Now, now, some of y'all, you, you, you won't be able to praise them over this, uh, but, 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 but all of us, before we had to go to school, we had to take a shot. We had to be vaccinated. Now, what about the flu, flu shot? The flu shot, now, now you got to get this, Stacey. The flu shot is only 63% effective. So you done got the flu shot and get the flu. But the vaccination in which we, oh, I'm sorry, which I got, which I got, it is 95 to 97% effective. And they said that even if you get the virus, you won't be able to spread the virus because you have antibodies that's fighting against the virus. Some of y'all need to understand that God is trying to get you some antibodies that will fight against the virus and you will have to go and get tested every week because you got those antibodies that, oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Somebody here, change your mind. Change your mind. You ain't gonna be able to praise him over this. Where did you get that information from? Where did you get that? Oh, I, I was at the barber shop. I was at my, my, I was at my, my beautician, and, and, and she said, I wouldn't take that if I was you. Hmm. I'm going to get a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? The Bible says... The Bible says this. The Bible says in Luke, the fourth chapter, it says, don't test the Lord your God. The Bible says, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But the Bible goes a little deeper than that. It says that every soul is subject to higher authority. And so that means if the government is the higher authority and what they have can save your life or save your loved one's life, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my little black fat self in line and I'm saying, you know, I'm going to go and take this and just believe God. Come on, somebody, because you go to the doctor, don't you? you? Come on, you faith people, you still go to the doctors, don't you? I'm going to get my little fat self in this line and I'm, shoot me up, doctor, shoot me up. Oh, I got to come back in 21 more days? I'm going to come back in 21 more days. Why? Because the CDC, come on, somebody, say, that it can save my life. Uh, me, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me. Uh, I'm losing somebody. I'm losing somebody. Let me. So, so number one, number one, I believe three things need to change in order for you, in order for you to prosper and have economic empowerment. Number one, perception. Your understanding or your mentality has to change. It troubles me how we overthink, overanalyze, and certainly over debate about about such nonsensical conditions in our lives 
told me some things are not up for debate. Some things, when it comes down to my life, some things is not open for debate. It's not, you know, we, we, we're not going to talk about this. I don't care what your belief is. Me and you, we're not going to even talk about this. Because since I'm not going to change your mind, I'm going to let you know you're not going to change my mind either. And so we're discussing nonsensical things that has to do with life and life itself. When God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We're too spiritual. Too spiritual and we're leaving our loved ones. 600,000 people. We want to be in our position to say, I wish there was a vaccine that was available for me. I wish I wish I could get in line. I, I, I wish I could just wait and get in line and, and take, the, take the vaccination. But, but here we are as, 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 as folk, intelligent folk, listening to each other. Overanalyze. Over debate. The Hebrew word for understanding means binai or binay. Has a root which also means discernment, wisdom, perception, and knowledge. A Christian that lacks discernment lacks consistency. We ain't gonna be able to, we ain't gonna be able, Brother Simmons, we ain't gonna be able to delete this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say it anyway. Wish we could. Because some of our, some of our African American people are going to predominantly white churches, which is, which is good. But you got to remember that this virus is not affecting Caucasians, Caucasians as it is black folk. It is predominantly attacking. Oh, you, I, there's something. Look at somebody said it. There's something in my genes. There's something in my DNA. There's something in my pigmentation. There's just something, something that is attacking us at a higher rate. So if I am a Caucasian pastor and I'm standing there and I'm encouraging my people, even if even though I may have African-American people in my congregation and I'm encouraging them that they might die if they take the vaccination shot. then I might be signing off on somebody's. Let me not say that because I, I don't want y'all to think I'm trying to, ch trying to change your mind. I'm just saying that perception has to change. The Bible says in Philippians 2 and 5, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Number two, the second thing has got to change is, is, uh, is, 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 is praise. The second thing has got to change is attitude. Why? Because a grateful heart brings abundance. See, see I'm, I'm so excited, not, not from what God has already done. I'm just so excited about what God is doing. I'm so excited about what God is going to do, praise God. And I'm going to keep this excitement, not just for today, but I'm going to keep this excitement tomorrow and the next day and the next week. Why? Because I have a grateful heart. And when a person has a grateful heart, they can walk in their gratefulness. Can anybody shout glory? The Bible says in Psalm 34 and 1, the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be. Continually be. You praise God enough, you ain't got time to complain. When you want to complain, come on somebody, make an adjustment, shift, and begin to praise him. Hallelujah, glory to God. God, I got a right to complain, but hallelujah, glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. I bless your name, Jesus. I praise you, Lord God. I bless you. Why? So when it's, when it's praises continually fly out of your mouth, that means you have a grateful heart. 
that means you can't help but to praise him. Come on, somebody. Come on, cussers. When you want to cuss because you got praise in your mouth and praise in your heart. Praise has come out instead of a curse word. Praise your Lord God. Praise you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you did, you did that, Karen, for real? Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <sighs> and the last, last but not least, what it has to change is our, is our principle, our actions. I don't stop sowing because I had a bad experience. We had, we had a young lady that wanted us to pay, pay her bill. And, um, and, 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 and um, we didn't pay her bill because a couple of days prior, we, we, saw, we saw her at, at the crab stop. <laughs> y'all yeah, see, y'all, y'all getting quiet over here. Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Was it? Well, okay, okay. Okay, was it you? Or, well, okay. <laughs> And so we didn't pay her bill because because days prior we saw her at the crab stop. And so we didn't when we didn't pay her bill. What she said was she said I want all my money that I paid in time. Which wasn't much. But evidently you didn't read the fine line. So I don't stop sewing just because I had a bad experience. And that's what we do, praise God. We had a bad experience. This is not that church that has $50 line, $100 line, $200 line. No, baby, we're not those kind of people. We allow God to move up on your heart to give whatever you choose to give as God directs you. And some of us have come from churches because we've had a bad experience. We want to stop giving. The devil is a lie. Can anybody shout glory? So the Bible says in Luke 6 and 38, the Bible says, Given it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, run over, shall men give them to your bosom. I want to give you this, praise God. Because Isaac sold in the year of famine and reaped a hundredfold. In the year of drought, in the year of scarcity, you, you guys can get, come on, come on. In the year of recession, he sowed in the day of famine and reaped a hundredfold because of his obedience. Can anybody shout glory? If you don't see God bigger than lack, all that you have will all that you will have. So if you don't see God being bigger than your light, can I get, get a little deeper? If you don't see God bigger than your little apartment, big, bigger than your little hoopty, come on somebody. See, because when we, when we were living in the project, praise God, my wife would tell you, I would literally go into rich people neighborhood, pull in front of their, their driveway and say, baby, one day, one day, one day. Because I knew that my God was bigger than the project. I knew that God was bigger than, than, than my apartment. I knew that God was bigger than the car that I was driving. And every time we drive it, praise God, stuff will be getting all on our head because the, 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 the lining was falling down. And we would get out go to church and brushing off the little children and brushing out my wife out. But we knew that God was bigger than that. You got to see God bigger than your lack. You got to see God bigger than that little apartment. You got to see God bigger than that dead end job. God is bigger than that. Somebody here, God is bigger. God is bigger. God is bigger. God is bigger than that. You have to see it. You got to see that where you are 
cannot contain the bigness, the vastness, the thickness of our God. I crack on, on, on Dick and Simmons every now and then. I say, I say, Dick and Simmons, when my moment happened, I say, I'm not going to come to you. I'm going to come to your wife. Dick and Simmons, he, you know, he about like me. We, we very low key. It, it don't take much to please us, praise God. Even though his wife said that he, you know, he be uh, sneaking cookies every now and then, but we gonna tell her. He but he, he just, you know, he just, you know, he just a, 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 a simple guy. Dick and Simmons is just a simple guy, and, and I'm telling you, I mean, nothing gets Dick and Simmons. I'm, you know, even if you want to throw something, Dick and Simmons, it's all right, it's all right, it's good, it's going good. So, so, so when my moment happened, I'm going to go to his wife because I know his wife got big dreams and aspirations, and I, I know that she want to do some things, praise God, and, 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 she, and I'm going to let her talk, talk him into doing whatever she want to do. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Come on, you, you've sown so much into the kingdom, praise God. It's time for you to go on a vacation. It's time for you to enjoy life. It's time... So, what time is it? It's my time. Whose season is it? It's my season, okay. What time is it? Whose season is it? Now, why is this so important? Because some of y'all need to know how important what I'm about to say is. I didn't talk about this before now for a reason. Because it is the seed that you sow that goes beyond your life. Even when your children make bad decisions, it is your seed that can speak to God. Okay, y'all can get quiet, y'all get quiet. Got a phone call Thursday morning when I was going to the eye doctor. And the phone call went like this. It was from Pastor Reckley. And she said that my daughter was going to work in her car hydroplane. And her car, as it hydroplane, praise God, if it did flip over, it, it went off into a ditch. And it stopped right before it got to a tree. She said, she say, Mama, that's all I can say. God, don't let me die right here. And she called her husband, and her husband came to the scene. And am I saying it right? And when he got to the scene, another car came to hydroplane and trapped him in between cars. Y'all got to get this. Y'all got to get this. And so Pastor Reckley called us to tell us the story. She said, I'm going to see my baby. Y'all got to get this. She said, I'm going to see my baby. And the Holy Spirit told us not to pray with her on the phone because we knew that she would have got emotional about the prayer. So my wife said, we're about to pray right now. And my wife hung up the phone with Pastor Reckley. And she said, honey, pray. And as I was going to the eye doctor, I began to pray. Now, some of y'all, you would look at me like I'm crazy, Lorenz. And you would say, I know you're going to call down heaven and ask God to touch Ken. And ask God to touch her husband. And ask God to touch Shar, And ask her to touch the children. I did not start out praying that way. When I start to pray, I start to pray like this. Father God, remember the seed. Y'all got to get this. Remember the seed of Pastor Reckley. Remember how she has sown into the kingdom. Remember this year but will be 25 years in which she's held up the man and woman of God's arm. God, I pray right now that you remember her faithfulness and her commitment and her love and her diligence and her faith in the kingdom. God, I pray right now because of her seed in the kingdom that you will save her son-in-law and her daughter. That's how I prayed. 
I didn't call down heaven and say, God touch Ken. God touched us. I called down God and I reminded God of what the mother did because I once was young, but now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed I'm begging for bread. Some of our children are so stupid, they don't even know they're still alive because of our seed. They're so stupid, they don't even know that they still exist because of our seed. They don't even know because of our commitment. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God remembered them because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God remembered me because of Lawl and Luther. Come on, somebody. And Donis and Henry. God remembered me. So she... So she called us back. And my wife said, give us the good news. Y'all got to get this. And that's all she could say is, thank you, Jesus. That's all she could say is, glory to God. That's all she could say is, I, I got a miracle, Pastor. And she was just crying and she was just so emotional. She said, Pastor, my daughter ain't got a scar on her body. Y'all got it. Isando Rabba, son. Isando Rabba. God, Pastor, my daughter ain't got a scar on her body. My son in law, he's up sitting in the bed talking. My children are all right, Pastor. But because of her seed and because of her sacrifice, God had to move on her behalf. You better learn how to start sowing seed, praise God. Sow it in the morning, sow it in the evening, because you don't know whose life your seed is saving. Can anybody show? Shout glory. She called us. Stacy, she called us crying. Didn't want to hang up the phone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh. So when the Bible says, come, let us reason together, Hezekiah reminded God of his faithfulness. When God said, you're going to die, Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and he began to talk to God. And he reminded God about his forefathers. And how they worship idol gods and how his forefathers kicked God out of the temple. And he began to remind God that I opened up the doors of the temple and we begin to worship the true and living God. And the Bible says before, before Isaiah can get out of the courthouse, courtyard, the Bible says he had to turn around and, and tell Hezekiah, I know God said you're going to die, but God just told me he's going to add 15 more years to your life. So y'all better learn how to remind God. You better learn how to remind God. You better re learn how to remind God. Don't let your daughter stay out there. They say, you better remind God out of the seed in which you've been sowing. You better remind God. Cherry, don't let your children stay out there. You better remind God of what the seeds that you've been sowing in the kingdom. God, I've been sowing. I've been sacrificing. I've been giving. God, I pray that my seed go and reach my seed. Missy, let my seed go and reach my seed. Let my seed go into places that I can't go. When you start doing that, don't be surprised when your children say, Mama, I don't know what's going on. Dad, I don't know what's going on, but there's something going on. <laughs> There's something, something, something going on, something going on. And you got to remember, sometimes God allows certain things to happen in our children's life to get our children's attention. And then you can ease up by the bedside and say, I've been praying for you. Y'all got to get this. I've been praying for you. I've been praying. I've been praying for you. I didn't pray for something like this to happen, but I've been praying that God will get your attention, that you can't do this without God. You better make sure you don't, you better make sure you remember God in the days of your youth. You better learn how to give God some praise. You better learn how to give God some time. You better learn how to give God some tithe. You you better get, learn how to give God some talent. You better learn how to give God some praise right here, right now, now in Jesus' name.
How? How could this be, Pastor? That when this woman of God left the pulpit on Wednesday after teaching a powerful word, how could she get up to news? How could she wake up to news like that? Devil trying to kill her seed, her baby, and her baby's husband. But when she called us, we began to pray. We began to remind God. When Missy called us about our oldest boy, we began to pray. We began to remind God. We began to pray and begin to remind God. And now all the charges are dropped. Why? Because we begin to pray. We begin to remind God. All of y'all got children. Y'all better give God some praise right there. Y'all better give God some praise right there. Y'all better give him some praise right there. Y'all better bless him right now because it's my time and it's my season. It's my time. It's my season. I'm ready to give God some praise over my situation. It's my time and it's my season. Come on and give God some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise, him some praise. Him some praise. right here, right now. Give him some praise. Glory, 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 glory. Now in my closing, I know some of you, some of you that are, that are viewing live, you're going to think that I, that I tried to encourage everybody to get the vaccination. I didn't say that. So stop that foolishness. I said what I did. I said who influenced me? I didn't let the barber shop. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't let the beautician. I didn't let my, my wife's nail technician influence me. I, so Stacy, when I when I when I saw when I saw when I saw Governor Santos take that into the well influential neighborhood. I said, this thing must, must be serious. Because cause guess what? We're going we gonna to give it to them first. This thing, so, I, so I, was, I was observing. And even President Trump, all that talk, snuck and got, got, got the, he snuck and got the vaccine. Uh. Him and his wife, they get this right. Get, get, get this on. Now he's leaving people in limbo. Our people are dying. A horrible, alone death. Alone. I can't tell you who. I can't tell you who. But one of my nurses, they they work with the patients, and they said, said Pastor, this is a horrible way. To die. Horrible. Literally, literally, in some hospitals at that time, they had entire wings. And you couldn't go back there. They had entire wings for those patients. And so let me say this. I don't care if it's 100 people died. My eyes was already open like this. Okay, okay, all right, okay. And then when I saw how it, how it, was, it was affecting us, I said, no, I'm going to be an example. Amen. Amen. So don't walk away and say, I, I tried to change your mind. Stop that foolishness. Because if you do try it, may your, may your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. My job, my job is to educate. This God has given me a platform for a reason. He said in Ezekiel 33, he said, if you see a sword and don't warn the people, that sword is going to come to my house. But he said, if you see the sword and warn the people, that's on them. That's on them. I have a responsibility. 
have a responsibility to speak truth to power. And even if you don't want to hear it, I still have a responsibility. And, I w and, and let me say this. I don't, if, if you get the vaccine, I'll love you. If you don't get the vaccine, I won't love you any less. I will love you. I will love you. I just love you. You're just so precious. You're so sweet. But I'm going I'm to make sure you wear a mask around me. I don't trust you like that. Because uh, Kendall, I'm going to protect me. While you going off and getting married and stuff and having children, uh, my wife, my wife want to enjoy me too. I, I want to enjoy my wife at our older age. I still got a little, little youth in me. Look, let me say it again because Missy had a head. I still got a little youth in me. <laughs> Mom, you hear me? I still got <laughs> Father, bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let, let, let their perception change. Let it change, God. Let their mind change now in Jesus' name. You made certain things available, Lord God. And God, let us take advantage of what you've made available. God, touch us now. God, from the oldest to the youngest, God, I pray right now that we've said something that calls them to understand, Lord God, that that seed in which they have sown can go into their future and save the lives of, 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 of their loved ones. I believe that the seeds in which my mother and my father sowed, I believe that when the young men put a 45 to my head and a 38 to my ribs, I believe because of that seed, the devil couldn't kill me. At the age of 22, he couldn't kill me. He couldn't kill me. He couldn't kill me. He couldn't kill me. 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 So, Father, thank you for the seeds that have gone before me. Thank you for my mother and my father and my grandfather, my grandparents that sacrificed so much to see their grandson and their son stand before you and declare truth in the inward parts of the people's lives. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And let everybody say amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together as we close out. Listen, let me go and tell you right now. You want to be a blessing? It's time to give. It's time to sow. It's time to labor. It's time to put your seed in the ground and watch God work for you. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise.